Um, this paper is about, uh, well, two things essentially. One is uh, learning from inconsistencies, and the second one is uh, related to cognitive architectures. Now, this session is about cognitive architectures, so perhaps I should stress this a bit. Uh, but I need to combine both things. We have also a session about learning as well. So uh, we will see, uh, perhaps we hear so already a certain bridge to something else here. This is an overview of the talk. I will start with an introduction, essentially giving you a motivation uh, why learning in cognitive systems can be considered as something that starts from consistencies. Uh, and how to bring these things together. Then I will very briefly uh, present you an architecture that is called ICOG architecture. Probably you don't know this architecture. Precisely, I think, five months old, so it's a relatively new thing. Uh, it gives you some general ideas of the different modules. Then uh, I will talk a bit about learning from inconsistency, starting with some general remarks, and then continue <coughs> essentially uh, one type of learning from inconsistency based on analogic, analogical reasoning. In particular, you could consider the process of establishing an analogical relation based essentially on some fine-tuning and some adaptation process that is essentially triggered by some occurring inconsistencies. Here's this learning and cognitive system slide. Uh, so, first of all, usually cognitive architectures are based on a number of different modules. So, for example, hybrid system, this is a kind of a problem uh, because perhaps you are talking about very different data structures in the symbolic and the symbolic modules. Perhaps you talk about highly complex data structures, I don't know, graphs, tables, trees, stuff like that. Um, or, let's say, an interpretation function of a certain logical theory, for example, which is a highly heterogeneous and complex thing. And on the other hand, if you have a neuro, uh, yeah, neuro-inspired connectionist uh, module, then this is usually based on real vector, uh, real numbered vectors. Now, obviously, coherence problems and <coughs> consistency clashes occur all the time in such art architectures, in particular in such hybrid architectures. Uh, and uh, two main questions could be asked. The first one is on which level should learning be implemented? So do we talk about an overall process that somehow uh, on, on the top controls what's going on in the, in the, in the system? Or do, do we want to distribute somehow uh, learning in every module? Every module is constantly adapting and uh, learning. And the second one is what are plausible strategies in order to resolve such inconsistencies. And I will perhaps give you just an idea how this can be achieved. The main claim, uh, the main idea of this talk is uh, use occurring inconsistencies <coughs> as a mechanism or a trigger for learning. So don't consider inconsistencies as something that are only bad. Perhaps they are bad, clearly, yes. But uh, not they are not only bad because they can trigger something like an adaptation process that makes the thing Again, nice. Here's the general overview of this ICOG architecture. Uh, it's a modular system and it has different modules. Uh, but there are three main things. Actually, these modules themselves are relatively complex. So the first module is what we call analogy engine. It is based on a theory we de developed in the last years called heuristic-driven theory projection. Uh, <coughs> the essential claim here is that this analogy engine is able to cover not only uh, the possibility to establish an analogical relation between two domains, but also to cover certain other types of reasoning. For example, there's a theorem uh, prover in build, and there are possibilities for inductively generalizing things that are not more or less in, in the classical sense of inductive reasoning. Uh, so, but Clearly, the governing principle behind that is somehow this analogy engine. Then, uh, this is actually based completely on, on a symbolic level. Uh, it uses a logical calculus and it allows even second order anti unifications. So, in a certain sense, uh, variable for relations and functions as well. Then, the second system is the ontology rewriting device. We started this a couple of years ago. Uh, because actually the motivation was something completely different. It was, it was about text technology and learning ontologies for text technological applications and natural language processing, perhaps semantic web applications. And here the idea is that if you have this learning procedure, then what you get all the time is you get the clashes, right? 
And this is problematic if you have a kind of a logical representation of your ontological knowledge, because then it's usually your system yeah, well, crashes somehow, right? <coughs> and what you can what you need to do here is a automatic rewriting procedure that makes it okay again. Now really this does not work for every case. If you get an input A and an input not A, then usually you have no possibility to do anything, except you have some confidence rates and based on statistics what to do. But certain other uh, types of, of problems like overgeneralization of concepts, undergeneralization of concepts, polysemy problems uh, uh, in, in this concept formation thing, that is not so problematic and can in many cases automatically be resolved. And then there's this neurosymbolic learning device uh, that started out of an uh, exercise essentially we wanted to go to a certain conference and we needed a paper for that. Now this is now, now some, some, some years ago and in the medium actually there was a, a very beautiful uh, uh, sort of seminar for four weeks ago, perhaps some of you know that there is in Germany there's this there's this Dachstuhl seminar. I don't know if some of you were already at Dachstuhl. <coughs> and there went, actually, this, this symposium or this seminar was not about neurosymbolic integration, but it was about recurrent, recurrent networks. But also with a strong emphasis of frameworks in trying to uh, model this neurosymbolic uh, integration idea. And actually, there are several systems on the market. Actually, the idea is relatively old. Relatively old. Most of these systems are not really optimal because either they cannot learn or they are completely propositional. Actually there are two systems that can learn in principle <coughs> uh, on a predicate logic level. One is was developed by Hildobler, Hitler and some other people from Karlsruhe and Dresden and some other universities. Uh, the, the newest version was, pro, uh, 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 was um, presented at the Ichkai uh, 2007 and the second one uh, is this system. What you can do here is you can uh, learn uh, closures of logical theories to a certain degree and actually you come close to benchmark problems of the, uh, symbolic theory provers. So this is quite surprising what you get. Okay, these three modules and these come together in the following architecture. This looks like the following. So you have uh, an architecture uh, which code somehow the memory, that is the ontology rewriting device, learning constantly, you have the analogy engine, that is responsible for reasoning, for many types of reasoning, clearly not all types of reasoning, but many types of reasoning, that is based on the theory which is called HTTP, heuristic driven theory projection, and then you have this neurosymbolic learning device, this is a, a framework that <coughs> is able to learn highly structured input in particular in this respect, an interpretation function for full first order logic essentially. And actually the framework is based on a relatively simple tech propagation algorithm on a straightforward network. Okay, then uh, I, I think I can skip this slide due to time constraints. It's just uh, again um, um, uh, summarize what these things do. So uh, uh, the ontology rewriting device rewrite is a rewriting algorithm where you adjust and adapt uh, inconsistent information, the neurosymbolic learning device learns by a backpropagation algorithm and in the case of the analogy engine uh, you use actually, th that is essentially what I wanted to, 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 to show you today is essentially the idea that based on inconsistencies analogical adaptation processes can be triggered. Uh, the claim one is learning is distributed over the whole system so every module is essentially learning and the second claim is learning takes place because errors and inconsistencies occur uh, in the system triggering some adaptation process. This is clear for ontology learning, quite simply because that's the very idea of it. This is clear for the neurosymbolic, uh, in the, uh, neurosymbolic uh, learning device because you just backpropagate the error of the input essentially and this for, for analogic reasoning I can show you some ideas. Um, well, um, we talk about inconsistencies in a very loose manner here. So they are not necessarily in a strong sense logical inconsistencies in a, in a, in a very specific logical sense. So uh, they, are, they are very loosely uh, used here for example in the sense that uh, if you want to establish uh, an analogical relation between two domains but they fit not together, they don't fit together because there's a type clash or a category type. Class. This is not a literal logical inconsistency in the sense that you can deduce phi and not phi as well and then you clash somehow. 
but uh, as a certain other type. But this is also called consistency here. Clearly, in the ontology uh, learning, it's somehow similar because if you talk about philosophy problems, this is not literally an inconsistency in the logical sense. Now, what is uh, HTTP consider? What, what does it consist of? Well, you have uh, so you have an input which is back, which is a source domain and a target domain, and uh, what you do essentially you do anti-unification. Uh, this is a theory based on uh, uh, Blockchain theory from the 70s. Um, it was applied to various domains. Currently, we are doing a lot of geometric things with that, uh, but it was also applied to maybe physics and metaphors and some other kind of stuff. Uh, some features are, well, I skip the features, I show you in principle what, it do, what it's doing. So you have a source and a target, this is recursion essentially of uh, the addition and multiplication. Uh, you, the algorithm searches on the target side an axiom that is based on the complexity measure, respectively a certain uh, measure of simpl simpl simplicity, and it, it takes one of the target domain, searches one in the source domain, and doing this anti unification. In this case, it takes beta 1 and matches it with alpha 1, generalizes gamma 1, uh, introducing some uh, variables for the operations and a variable, so to speak, for the neutral element. And then it goes on with beta 2 and is doing the same. So, so if you had one variation, for example, you interchange the arguments in beta 1, where you interchange S0 and X, then something like that is no longer possible. What you do, you do re-representation, you have a clash, you do re-representation, you have some kind of deduction, and then you solve the problem. Here's, if you go look into the paper, here's a second example that is a little bit more complicated, where I have to do a lot of reasoning. Here are the conclusions that I claim. In cognitive architectures, inconsistencies should be considered as a trigger for learning uh, and adaptation. These adaptation problems can be relevant for adapting background knowledge, for establishing a logical relation, and for neural based learning. And learning in the system is uh, distributed and continuously realized. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. 11 and a half minutes and a recursive example.